How to catch squid. Hi fellow fishos, my name's Roger Osborne and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to catch squid. Look at that little guy. Also I'm interviewing my friend Hayden who I brought down. He does a lot of squidding, catches lots of squid. So I'm sure you're going to get heaps out of this video. I've put all of today's information into a PDF that you can click the link and download and also there'll be a link in the description which includes a fantastic recipe for a beautiful spiced flour that you can use when you're cooking your squid. And make sure you check out rogersfishing.com, Australia's newest online fishing community. Rogers Fishing is packed with a huge ever-growing resource of step-by-step -step courses, instructional videos, live question and answer sessions with me and loads more. Whether you're an absolute beginner or have been fishing for decades, there's something for everybody. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think. How does a squid jig work? Well, they're designed to look a bit like a prawn, perhaps some sort of weird looking fish. Um, and they have these prongs at the back, which are actually pointing backwards. And when a squid comes along to grab it, it grabs it like this and then tries to pull and it, it impales itself on these really sharp spikes. So when you're actually, when you've hooked a squid and you feel him pulling like that, you can imagine if you just maintain the pressure when you're pulling it in, he can't get off because he's as he's trying to get away, he's pulling this way and each time he pulls to escape, he's just pulling himself tighter onto those really sharp prongs. So when you actually hook the squid, you don't pull it in too hard, you're gentle with it, but you just maintain a constant pressure so that you, know, you don't let it go loose, so potentially it could sort of get off. They don't actually get off that, that, that much, but it is important to keep that constant pressure so that you know that it can't escape off the prongs. And it's quite amazing, they obviously work really well. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I'm down here on the rocks with my good buddy Hayden. We're always down here exploring. And Hayden actually, he loves catching squid and he catches hundreds of them. So I thought I'd interview him and just get a few tips from him as to what he thought has made a difference with him catching squid. So Hayden, I'm gonna ask you, what are, the, what are three things that you could tell people who are, perhaps don't know how to catch squid? Um, three things that you've learnt uh, that have helped you, starting off with number one. All right. Uh, most important, oh, all right, we'll go with the, what I think is probably the, one of the most important things anyway. Uh, I'd say with braid. Uh, braid is probably what I've found to be the most, one of the most important things. If I was to have just three, that's definitely up there. Um, it gives you a, that extra casting distance. Uh, you'd, you'd have to be looking at somewhere between 30 to 40% maybe extra casting distance. You're covering more water. Yeah, you're using a lure, so anytime you're covering more water with a lure is always, always good. Um, if you're ever using braid, off the rocks, it's going to cut like cotton on the on the rocks. So you always have to match that up with a, with a leader, uh, either a nylon or a, a mono leader, um, mono uh, sorry mono or car fluorocarbon leader. And uh, I like to go with a 20 pound leader just to so I can pull through a bit of the weed if I get jagged on on some weed. And it's really only going to be the boulders that uh, I'll lose my jig on. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of weedy areas. Um, you can generally pull through and not lose any jigs if you've got a, a decent uh, leader on. That's awesome. That's good advice, you know, because, like Hayden said, extra distance, covering more ground, absolute winner. So, Hayden, what do you reckon about what's the second most important thing that you've learnt? All right, uh, second most important thing. Okay, I I am a stickler for the white squid jig. Um, I, it's the only colour I use now. I tried a few different colours when I first started and uh, didn't have as much luck as what I have on the white. Um, different parts of Australia, and, and that could be slightly different, but I am noticing a lot of people, uh, even in different parts of the country like Victoria and uh, South Australia and that, are uh, using the white as well. So it's becoming more popular. So if I was to start with a colour, I would advise to start with the white. Um, Next would probably be a pink, and then you can go into your different colours, like your blues, browns, reds, and things like that. Um, yeah, so if I was to 
say to choose one colour, I would choose the white, glow white, and uh, that I've found to get me more squid. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, um, and I can say I've fished for squid a few times with Hayden, and based on Hayden's experience, I've used white, and we've had these squinting sessions where we're just dueling squid. Hayden pulls one in, I pull one in uh, on the white jig, so when you have success, you tend to want to stick to that, but we're, we're having a, a go today with some different colours. Yeah. So Hayden, what about point number three? What, do you, what else is important? What have you learned? All right, uh, may, I could have even started with this one. Um, this is probably the most important factor of the lot. You have to have a relatively low swell, probably nothing above maybe 1.2, 1 1.3 1 1 is uh, yeah, probably the maximum sort of swell that you want to be going in. Anywhere around about a 0 0.5 to, to 1, 0 0.9 or 1 metre is perfect. Um, and not too much wind. A little bit of wind is not too bad, but once you're up around about the 20 kilometres an hour, um, it, you can still catch squid in those conditions, but it will generally be a lot tougher, and sometimes you'll get none in those, in those conditions. So I like to wait for the right conditions. I like to wait for the low swell with the squid, and then uh, if it's a higher swell, I'll, I'll go for snapper or something like that. Okay, um, yeah. um, well, th that's a great point, because, you know, when you've got your low swell conditions, obviously it's a great safety thing, you're not thinking about waves, you've got nice clean conditions, uh, similar to what we've got today, there's only about a metre of swell down here today, so it's not too bad. I just want to ask Hayden one more question, how have you found uh, water clarity, like if you've got dirty water or clear water, have you noticed anything with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those, uh, it's another factor, um, probably not the most important factor, I've seen I've seen pictures of people bagging out on squid in, in dark waters, but ge on a general scale, um, the clearer the water, the better. Um, but like I said, not to say that, uh, you know, if, if you've got nothing else to do that day and the water's a little bit dirty, um, give it a go. Uh, still give it a go. because I went uh, yesterday and I got one. Normally I might get seven to 10 or 12 or some sometimes in really good conditions. Um, so I still got one. So it still, still can be worth it, but generally not uh, quite as good as the, the clearer the conditions are better. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks heaps, Hayden. No worries. Thank you, Hayden, for your insights. And this is from a guy who loves his squidding and gets a lot of squids, so you can, you can bank that information. How do you retrieve a squid jig? When you are using a squid jig, you don't retrieve it like you would a normal lure that you just wind in constantly. We've actually found off the rocks that you need to allow your squid jig to sink because most of the squid we catch are lower in the water column. A lot of people are concerned about doing that because they think if they let their squid jig sink, they're gonna get snagged on the bottom and lose it. I mean, if you're in really rough terrain, that may happen and you may use, lose the occasional jig. However, you catch a lot more squid by letting your, your squid jig sink down. So I'm gonna chuck this one out here now. And when I'm fishing with it, I'm just winding up the slack. And now I'm actually gonna let that squid jig sink right down near the bottom. I'm not winding it in straight away. I'm actually waiting. It depends on how deep it is, but I'm guessing it's about five or six metres deep out there. It's a combination of weed and rock. But you certainly don't wind it in across the surface. Not at all. You've got to risk getting snagged on the bottom. Then when you get down, you think you're on the bottom, just lift it up a little bit and then wind up the slack and let it let it glide back down, down again. It's actually fairly similar to using a soft plastic, but a lot more gentle. So I'm actually waiting. I'm letting that squid jig go down. He's hovering down near the weed beds. But now I'm gonna lift him up again, wind up the slack line again, and wait. And that's the best way to retrieve your squid jig, most productive. I have an abundance of fresh squid that we just caught. And now I'm gonna show you how to prepare it and cook it. So first of all, I'm gonna grab a squid. I'm gonna grab this, this one's a pretty solid one. I'm actually gonna do this in the sink because it can be a little, bit, a little bit messy. I'll put some cold water on. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the squid's head. You can see how it's got like, it's like a hood. You can see all that's open up there. So 
So really all I'm going to do is just put my fingers in here and I'm just removing the squid's head like so. This is very good bait but also very good to eat. So now that I've removed the squid's head, you'll notice that the squid has two flaps. It has a main tube or body and it has a flap on each side. I'm actually just going to press in here with my fingers into its skin. I cut my nails yesterday so I don't have any knife, fingernails. So basically what I'm doing is I've just, you can see the skin there, I've see my fingers under the skin. So I've poked my finger in there and now I'm really just peeling this skin off um, and I'm removing the two flaps. So here's the other flap here, I'm just going to um, poke in underneath it. I've got to use a little bit of force, hang on. Won't be a second, yeah that's it. So I've got, see how I look? Just to re free that, that other, other flap off there, I've just got my, you can see it's like a, a sock in there. So that just peels off like so. So I've just peeled, what I've done here is I've peeled the two flaps off the tube of the squid. Can you see that? There are those two flaps. Now that's totally edible, but I'm going to keep it for bait. That has left me, so I'll peel this other bit of skin off. Okay, so I'll just peel the rest of the skin and you can see that's a squid tube like you would buy at the supermarket. The only thing left for me to do here now is I need to remove um, its guts out of the middle. There's not a lot in there, you can see that. And I also need to remove the backbone which is, um, I'll show you what it's like and I'll show you how to do that. Actually I might do that first. I'm just going to turn the water on, just have it running a little bit. And I'll just, uh, it's still got a little bit of ink in him. But can you see here in this squid tube, this, this bit which pokes out here, you'll find that this is quite tough where this is all bendy. That's actually its backbone and it's a bit like, it's like a cartilage. It's quite amazing and I just, you just kind of free it there and then run your fingers in uh, to free it off the body of the squid and then you pull it out. Can you believe that? Look at that. I'll just turn this off for a second. That look, it just totally feels and looks like plastic. But that's like the backbone and cartilage. It's incredible of the squid. And that then just leaves, leaves me with a little bit of stuff in there. I'll turn the tap back on. I'm just going to, um, with this one, I'm going to slice it in, into rings like calamari. So I want to remove uh, the bits from the middle. Just give it a little bit of a wash. Because this one we're going to turn into calamari. I'm going to slice it in rings. Now I'm just going to quickly grab another one. I've got these two tubes. You can see that small one and the large one. Now I'm going to come over to the cutting board and we will slice them up. Okay, so we've got our two squid tubes here. This one I'm going to do in rings like calamari. I'm actually just going to tidy up the end. See, I've just cut that bit off. Look, that, that's edible. But I might use it for a bit of burly. Now all I'm going to do to get, do my calamari rings is slice it about a centimetre thick. See there you've got one ring and then um, another ring, etc. Look at that, 15 rings out of one squid. That's ah, pretty awesome. I'm just going to put those rings in the bowl. Today I'm, doing a I'm going to do a combo of diamond cut squid and uh, the calamari rings. So what I'm doing with this one is you've got your hollow squid tube. You just put your knife in like that and cut it through like that on one side. So then you actually open up the squid tube like so. Now it's got a little bit of um, his innards just left in there. So I'll just remove that. I'm just going to dry that off a little bit with some paper towel. It'll make it a little bit easier for me to handle. All right now I'm, just actually, I'm actually going to trim that off as well. That kind of that rough edge. Now when you do a diamond cut you use the tip of your knife you don't want to slice all the way through to the cutting board you're really just scoring it like you would do crackling in roast pork. I'm being quite gentle here. You see that I'm actually doing these about five millimeters apart. It's got to be it's quite soft so I'm being very careful. Because I want to do cuts now on the opposite diagonal I'm flipping this guy over and I'm just going to repeat the process starting at this end doing very gentle cuts in the opposite direction 
when you cook it it'll give you that diamond effect that you see when you buy salt and pepper squid in the restaurants. It's not very thick, the whole thing is only probably two and a half mils thick. So I've done that, now I've done my diamond. You can see that? See the diamond pattern? Now I'm going to slice these into the normal size pieces that you would um, have salt and pepper squid at a restaurant. So I think normally I, I would estimate that you would have pieces about that big. Um, and then what happens is when I cook these, they're going to curl up and you'll get that diamond pattern coming out. So now I've done two there. I think what I'll do here is I'll go like that and I'll go like that. So out of this small squid tube, we end up with um, eight beautiful pieces of diamond cut fresh squid. So I've got some friends coming over shortly and we are going to tuck into this squid. So now we're going to move on to the rest of the recipe. The flour coating that we use to dust the squid with is really super simple. It's just purely equal quantities of plain flour and corn flour with salt and pepper. If you have a mortar and pestle you can get like sea salt and peppercorns and you can grind it in your own mortar and pestle but really this will be fine. So I'm just going to do, this is a one cup measuring thing. So essentially I've got one cup there of corn flour. Now it's going to quickly open my plain flour. So you can see I've got my corn flour in there and now I'm just going to fill this up with plain flour. Basically the same quantity of plain flour as corn flour. Tip that in there. Now I've just got some pink Himalayan salt. I'm going to put maybe reasonable, reasonable amount. And now it's going to do the, do the pepper. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of to your own liking how much pepper that you like. It's a decent, I like pepper so I put a decent amount. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a whisk. I'm just going to whisk this flour and, and salt and pepper together just to mix it up. And this is what we're going to dust our squid with and make the coating. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to tip corn flour, flour, salt and pepper mixture into a plastic bag like so. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pop my squid, my, my rings and my diamond cut squid in this bag, shake it around to coat my salt and pepper squid and then it's ready for frying. So my friends have arrived and it's uh, time to cook. So I've got my flour mix. Because I've cut some of it uh, diamond cut and some of it um, as calamari rings, I'm going to do them in separate batches because I think that they'll take different lengths of time to cook. It's all in the bag. Give it a good um, dusting. Now, the oil is looking, I don't have a thermometer so I'm just guessing. I just want it nice and hot. So it's looking pretty good. Might just put one in to test it. Just see how hot that is. Okay, well it's not too bad. I might just wait a second longer before I put some of the other squid in. If I put too much squid in at once, it'll take heat out of the pan. And we want to have that nice hot sizzling. So make sure that you don't overload the pan when you're cooking the squid. So I've just put a piece in to test it. Uh, I'm actually going to grab my tongs. Okay, so start, look at that, he's starting to curl up. He's alive. <laughs> Classic. Look at that. That will be a good test piece for me. So I'm going to put a bit more in now. That's looking okay. So I'll just put a few more pieces of squid in. Oh, look at that. Those ones are rolling up straight away. When you're cooking squid, remember they really don't take long to cook. Just fry until lightly golden. That's about a minute each side for the rings and slightly longer for the diamond cut. Just make sure your pan of oil is nice and hot. Don't overload it either. Otherwise the temperature will drop. No one likes soggy squid. I prefer to use sunflower oil because it heats to a higher temperature without burning. Finally, plate up your delicious squid pieces and garnish with a little finely sliced chili and some spring onions. Serve with a side of aioli.
you just can't go wrong. Okay, time for the first round. So here we go, beautiful salt and pepper squid. So we've had a few squidding sessions. It's been fantastic. Got quite a few squid and we've cooked it up at home, made our salt and pepper squid, which was so delicious. And don't forget that download because all of the details and the recipe is in the download. And also I want to add, if you live in Sydney, Sydney Harbour is really good for squidding. All of those headlands inside the harbour are quite protected. Middle Head, um, over near Manly, all of those rocky headlands have got great terrain where there's a combination of weed and rocks. So I can really highly recommend that as a place to squid. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and check out rogersfishing.com. And I'm gonna be back really quickly because I've got lots of videos on the go. And I'll see you in the next video.